Today I'm here to talk about, uh, about mobile television and what it is and what it's becoming, where it is today and where, like I said, I think how Chicago can be a big part of it. Um, I'm not necessarily going to talk too much about content creation itself. Miguel covered that really well earlier today. I'm going to talk a little bit about the philosophy of the medium from my perspective. Uh, as, as he said, my background's in traditional television, so I'm kind of coming at this space from that side of it, whereas you guys are coming from the ad side of it. Okay, And uh, I've been in the space about three years, and what I found very interesting, and for those that are new to the space, you might uh, realize this, that when they say the mobile space, or if you find guys that are really hip, they say the space. And what the hell does the space mean? You know what I mean? It's this weird vernacular. And I always remember thinking when I first heard that, well, the space means there's nothing there, right? It's empty. And in a lot of ways, that is very true. Okay? So, today, the global mobile market is very much a stage of walled gardens. You know, Sprint, Verizon, all these entities here that, that are the controlling uh, the mobile market are really keeping a lot of the Hollywood insiders out, okay? The, uh, the traditional development process is completely different than what it was. And what you're seeing now in the mobile space, because of its immaturity, is really repurposing of content, okay? Uh, platforming things that are maybe existing on the web, bringing them into the mobile space. And so... One of the things that's holding things up the most, and what's most important to remember about the mobile space today, is the technical limitations. You know, the reason why, you know, um, this phone gets 28 channels of TV via Mobi TV, repurposed TV. That's $10 a month. Now, you would think that is great. Well, the problem is, is that because of the narrow bandwidth that brings that signal to this device, the quality is very poor. And that's one of the reasons that, um, that it hasn't really been fully embraced yet. We're in this transitional period, and it's actually a very exciting time. You know, the notion of these technologies, these bandwidths, 3G, 4G, Wi-Fi, WiMAX, LTE, what the f***, right? <laughs> okay, nobody knows where it's going. And it's one of those things where, if you think about uh, online video in the mid-90s, we're buffering all those issues that we had, where today are gone. That's exactly where the mobile space is today. 3G, which is really what's available to people now, is essentially a narrow bandwidth. You have to have an... Uh, uh, media net to get the signal to this device. Narrow bandwidth, poor quality. 4G, or what's known as Wi-Fi, or WiMAX and LTE, that's a wide bandwidth. And once we get to that point, we will absolutely have great video quality. The other big issue, too, is you, know, you talk about mobile TV. Well, there's also the mobile web. So I can get Google on here and things like that that are much faster. And that's one of the things that I think that people are trying to figure out where they're at. And there's a lot of different players in the space I want to talk about. Now here, I want to talk a little bit about, the, um, about innovation, okay? So here's the question to all of you. Can you name one of the biggest new media advances of the 40s, which grew on a global scale, peaking in the 90s, and although in decline, still exists today? What would be the easy guess? TV? It is not TV. Stereo view cards. 3D stereo view cards. In 1890, that was the height of new media. If you go to an antique store and find one of these and flip it over, it will be printed in six, seven languages. This had a global reach. It was innovative. It was a new experience. And as I said, it still exists today, Viewfinder, which is available at Target today. Okay? This is how you have to think, this new experience and how things grow and evolve. Okay? Now, we are at this crossroads in media evolution, but one of the things that's different than where we've, you know, from where we've come before you know, going from the stereo views, right, to the radio, film, TV, computer, and now the phone, is that now we're kind of circling back. This new medium of mobile, whether it's television or mobile web or whatever it's going to be, or actually media as a whole, is going to be this convergence of TV, computer, and the phone. And I would even argue circling all the way back to the beginning. One of the biggest hot new things right now is 3D television, which you can buy, uh, I think it's Hyundai, believe it or not, makes it for $4,800. So it's all coming around full circle, okay? So that's really important to keep in mind when you think about the marketplace today. Okay, now, Hollywood is having a very difficult time with this, getting a sense of where all of this is. And the easy get for them in terms of staying back is the monetization, which I'll talk a little bit about later. But, you know, in 1950s, you know, they had this major issue. Was television furniture or an appliance? That was really, really an issue for them, and how they marketed it, 
how the content played, the whole thing. Now you look at the mobile device today, you know, is it just a phone where you can communicate and take pictures, like of my son playing mini golf for the first time in his life? Is that what it is? Or is it the ultimate communicator to strange new worlds? The world's remote control is what many call it. Because the device is always with you. It can control where you're going and where you've been, and who you're connected with, and where you are. So it is a time of great, great opportunity. Okay, the mobile space is a new medium and not TV for your phone. This is where Hollywood, I think, is really missing the mark at the moment. Because they, the whole notion is just repurposing the quick get. It truly is a new medium. And it touches on a little bit what Miguel said earlier. My opinion about uh, the mobile space is, is that it's a convergence of three things. Traditional media, branded advertising, and technology. Technology being the last mile. And inherently, these three worlds don't normally interact with one another. And what's really important to remember is, is that entertainment and the advertising worlds are, are, in a lot of ways, based in fear. Fear of losing the client, fear of uh, the show, the audience, the whole thing. Whereas technology is really science-based. You know, Bill Gates can get up there and talk about everything he's talking about because he knows the science is good and the technology is going to work. And that's why people like him have been able to succeed. Okay. Now, here's the secret. Applying the early lessons of television, in my opinion, to this new space and having the patience to know that it will come full circle. We're not going to all give up our phones one day, okay? Unlike like our laser discs and things of that nature. So if you think about the evolution of television, You've got the players, the Dumonts of the world, the Westinghouses, which in this case were radio companies that now moved into the TV space. Uh, and then the viewer, the viewer in terms of their embracing drives a lot of this content as well and this, and this world that we're living in. You know, uh, for Westinghouse, you know, people didn't know in 1948 if you'd have to have a Westinghouse TV to have Westinghouse content. Well, that's exactly the Amped Mobile version or Helio or some of these other virtual mo mobile networks, the MVNOs you hear about. You know, and, and so the ESPN phone and the Disney phone and all these different things, which have come and gone and all the rest, because they didn't apply the language of television. Now, the evolution, the FCC came in and said, sorry, Westinghouse, you're now going to be CBS, because the airspace is public domain, and we're going to administer it through the FCC. You know, one of the big things that I think is really going to propel the mobile space and where a lot of things are shaping themselves as we speak is this digital changeover next February. Once all that physical airspace that the TV signal's been going through since 1948 is now going to circle around, and you've all heard of these spectrum auctions, and that is what is going to propel this new industry. Okay? Now I'll talk briefly about the content. I'm like the content creator. I'm a storyteller. So again, you know, what is this new mobile content on the devices? Okay, it is not TV for your phone. Think of the challenge to storytellers of early television. The Lone Ranger, a great example. It was a radio show, a successful radio show, produced in New York, okay? The storytellers had to evolve their storytelling for the new medium and maintain their audience. They no longer were doing the show in New York. They were doing it in California. They had to get rid of the coconuts and get a real horse. And if you watch those early episodes of The Lone Ranger in black and white, you'll hear the stings of the music and all those elements of traditional radio because literally they just translated the scripts. But they had to eventually evolve the storytelling. Um, a lot of the very successful shows of early TV, your shows of shows, Sid Caesar, J Burns and Allen, they came from vaudeville because they had that experience, they had that exposure, and they brought it to this new technology. Okay? Now, as things progress beyond that, look at the Beverly Hillbillies. Okay, so that's 1961. Now, if you think of like Jackie Gleason in the early 50s, okay, on the Honeymooners, you know, that show was set in New York, bus driver, the whole thing. That's because the television audience, because the penetration was so low, you know, had to appeal to people in the, in the big cities. Whereas by 1961, the penetration was wide. And so Paul Henning, who created that show, and Green Acres, and Petticoat Junction, and all those very successful shows, was, were appealing to a wider audience. The other thing, too, is that with early television, single sponsor, okay? Whereas by the time that Beverly Hillbillies came along, the production values were greater, the costs were higher, and there was an audience that allowed you to justify multiple sponsors, okay? Now, I think two things are going to happen the whole notion of single sponsors for mobile content, but then also I think as the TV audience shrinks, single sponsors for television is going to make a very big comeback in the next 10 years. Now, the mobile space is one of true convergence. All right? It is the notion of where content is going to go from device to device to device. It's going to travel with us everywhere we go. Okay? This is an important, important thing to keep in mind. The whole notion for storytellers and marketers will have free reign to convey their message and to, to connect people through uh, social connectivity. 
Your new best friend is the consumer to convey your message because they're gonna be taking it in and sharing it with others, okay? That's really important to keep in mind because now they are invested in everything. And when you look at the research on younger demographics, a lot of the intrusion of brands that a lot of Gen Xers like myself and other people might find intrusive, millennials don't see that at all. They absolutely embrace it and share it. The tea parte uh, video is a classic example of that, where when you talk to young people, they know it, they've seen it, they've shared it, and they've watched it several times. And again, that is the whole notion of this, this mid-range of content. It's not a spot, it's not a series, but what it's going to become. And uh, you know, for me, in terms of mobile content, because no one really knows yet what the consumption's model is going to be, once we get to that place, you know, does it have to be on every day to bring you back? And you can think of some of the strengths of short-form television, like Tom talked about last night from Second City. You know, if you had Chris Farley, motivational speaker, every day for 90 seconds, people would tune into that. And that has value, and that provides a great potential for brands. <laughs> now, it is the new collaborations that are going to make the milestones in the space, in my opinion. The old rules do not apply. It's all about writing the new rules and then being ready to break them right away. You know, everybody's getting into this space, whether it's uh, like Nike Mobile, independent producers like Citizen Kate, big brands like American Idol, uh, you know, web companies, new aggregators like Moby, brand, you know, brand companies like Starcom, things like that, how they all circle in and how they all work together. These new relationships, you know, nobody knows where a connection is going to bring something through. It's all about dreaming the potential, okay? But the big thing is, is that everyone has to trust, and this is my big message, trust that the space will get there. It's, the mobile space is not about monetizing. That's the easiest answer in the world. It is not about monetizing because there, it's about bragging rights. A lot of the companies in Hollywood that are creating web uh, serialized content and mobile content and things like that are banking on one thing, not making money, about that one of their short form ideas is going to platform into a broadcast show because that is where the real money is. Now, the exciting thing for brands is, is that if brands can get involved at that early level and be partners from the very beginning, they then can follow the ride up and be investors in those shows. And that's what scares Hollywood the most. It's, it's going beyond the whole notion of single sponsors, but actually sponsors being part of the show top to bottom and that potential back end. It's, it's not about building brands through the sponsorship of programming anymore. It's about building brands through the programming itself. And I would argue that if you look at some of the greatest commercials of all time, the Where's the Beef and things like that, that still years later still resonate with people. It's about the strong character at the base. And isn't that also the, the same thing true about great television, the Archie Bunkers and the Ted Danson from Cheers and things of that nature? It absolutely is the case. Now that's where I see this great potential in terms of original content for the, for the mobile space, which is very much what I and my business focus is on. Okay? So you have to drive forward without the fear, right? Do not be afraid that the mobile is going to go away, okay? It is not going away, unless there's a nuclear pulse, but we won't get into that, okay? <laughs> Scratch that. Okay, so what you need to do is everything that I've talked about here. It's, you know, welcome the innovation. Welcome it. You see something new, embrace it, okay? Um, embrace the evolution. We're going to get there. It's going to be this whole great new thing. It is not about this, this, this little trickling along, okay? Fight the confusion, don't worry about it. Trust in something. Don't be afraid to hit the wall. Bounce back. Go at it again. Okay, that's one of the big problems with the venture market. A lot of these websites that are creating original content, okay, um, you know, it's going to be like the housing market. They come and go. They throw this big money into the space and start paying people to shoot this content, knowing they probably won't monetize it, but they're, they're just trying to keep their brand above water in the hopes that the market will mature, and we are just not at that point yet, okay? Um, seize the opportunity. There is opportunity there. I go all around the country, I, you know, I go to uh, ad tech, I go to all these different things, and you talk to these people, these significant people, whether on the marketing side, the studio side, whatever it is, they do not know where this is going. That is what is so exciting about the Chicago market and the, the, this, the New Media Summit, is that these new collaborations that could be fostered here could create ch Chicago as a boutique for leading the charge in terms of what this new medium is going to be. Okay? Apply the lessons learned. Don't forget where we've been what we've done, you know, the Dumonts of the world and things like that, those started here in Chicago. This is not a new concept for the city. This is very much part of the fiber of what Chicago is all about. All right? Foster convergence. Bring people together. Okay? Find new ways to bring it all together. You know, trust collaboration. Invest in relationships that are going to last. And drive forward. And you will find success. Release the fear and trust your gut. Do not fear the cougar. Okay? All right. There's my cougar bit. I apologize. Okay. 
All right, so now, okay, this is something fun for all of you to, to look at. Okay, you can, don't do this now, do this later, please. Okay, but um, so what it is, you know, in terms of original content and where we are today, you know, the studios, in these shrinking environments, whether it's TV and everything else, any monetizing whatsoever is key to them. That's why when you go to studio websites, it's wallpapers. If they can sell $40,000 worth of wallpapers of Leonardo DiCaprio in Paraguay, that is something positive on their, their sheets that they can take upstairs, okay? But it's going to go slow, and you have to be slow. You have to think about that early television, that early content, and what it's all about. And know that the, the mobile content is not going to be as slick as it always has been. It's going to be simpler. You've got to keep it simple. And remember, the mobile device is a one-on-one -on -one interaction. Uh, if, if people remember the early uh, Jackie Gleason sketch, Joe the Bartender, you know, that was the camera going through those saloon doors to Jackie every day who would pour you a drink. It was always the same customer. It was always the same moment of the day where the guy would get the drink before getting on the train. That's a relatable moment. Okay, that was a one-on-one -on -one interaction. People could get invested in that character, and that's why, you know, that, 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 that survives so much today. And that's very much what I think mobile content is and very much the style of the, um, the content that I'm creating today. Okay? Thank you all very much. Go Cubs. Good job. Thank you. Thank you very much.